Truckers and late night drivers tell the creepiest thing they've seen or experienced on the road. Like and subscribe or I'll haunt you tonight. I was driving through eastern Washington on some state roads. There were no rest stops or cities, but I had done the route enough to know there were these massive dirt areas every around 40 miles where you could park safely away from the road. I decided to call it a night and closed my blinds and laid down to watch something on my phone. After roughly an hour, I hear someone try to open the driver's side door. I haven't heard any vehicles on the road the whole time I'm parked, but I get up to peek out the curtains. As I'm looking out into the blackness of the driver's side window, I hear them try the passenger side door. I peek down from the top of the curtain but can't see anything, so I start the truck and kick on the lights. I'm fairly freaked out at this point, so I'm still not opening the curtain but peeking through gaps. Nothing, nobody is standing near either of my doors or parked within sight line. I take a deep breath and close the sleeper curtains too, because for some reason that's going to make things better right? After laying back down and convincing myself that something blew against the truck, and it only sounded like the doors, it was fairly windy outside and a lot of flat ground, I hear what sounds like someone trying to pry open the vents on the sleeper. The door handles start clicking again and the truck starts shifting like someone is climbing on it. I hit the little alarm button in the sleeper hoping to spook them off, but it does nothing but add to the noise of door handles, fingers tapping on windows and chassis, and the hiss of air coming out of the suspension. Then suddenly, it stops. A few moments where I can only hear myself breathing and my heart pounding before I hear another truck approach and then drive by. I spent the next few hours waiting for whatever it was to come back, but it never did. In the morning, I couldn't find any footprints or damage to my truck, but on every window were tiny human-looking handprints, like a toddler had licked their hand and stuck it to my window over and over. This story is from my grandpa. He's a retired long-distance truck driver, and he often drove throughout the night and early hours of the morning over unfamiliar roads. This one particular day, when my grandpa was in his 30s, it was between 2 a.m. and 3 a.m., and he was driving down a twisting country road that was so narrow only one vehicle could fit at a time. If two vehicles met from different directions, one would have to pull off the road to let the other pass. The road was empty safe for my grandpa. On the right side of the road, there was thick woodland, and on the left, open fields and a lake. There were no street lights. The only light came from my grandpa's truck and the moon. It was pretty lonely. My granddad was going steadily down the road, and going a bit faster than he should have. When my grandpa said this, I always took it to mean he was blazing down the road as fast as the truck could go. He was listening to the radio and probably not paying much attention when he suddenly felt hands on his shoulders and a voice whisper his name in his ear so close that he felt the breath on his skin. He recognized the voice, it belonged to his mother, who had passed away a few years previously. Naturally, this spooked my grandpa, and he instinctively hit the brakes. Seconds later, his headlights lit up a pile of three crashed cars that took up the entire road. My grandpa stopped just short of the wreckage. If he hadn't braked when he did, he would have plowed straight into the cars. The occupants in the crashed cars were all severely injured, and my grandpa was able to get emergency help. Had he joined the pileup, it probably would have meant a more dire outcome for all of them. There's a number of explanations for what my grandpa heard and felt, but my grandpa truly believes it was his mother giving him a warning. I've spent the past four years driving every day and night for work. I was in a fairly rural part of Mississippi somewhere between Clarksdale and Greenwood. Important note it's all two-lane highway the 250-mile drive home. The weather had turned pretty sour as I was leaving Clarksdale. I called my wife told her there was high wind advisories and very possible tornado threats throughout the Delta and I'd call her as soon as I made it to a safe area again. I had already been working for 14 hours when I got in the truck, so I had ate dinner and grabbed some coffee to stay awake and alert. Now, if you've never driven through flat farmland at night for 100 miles, it's very fatiguing and spooky without inclement weather. I had driven maybe 30 miles out into the farmland when hail started bouncing off my truck. Being a Mississippi native, I knew in July, hail meant tornado. I pull off to the side, I'm in the middle of nowhere, no lights to be seen, no cars behind or in front of me, and start looking for the storm or tornado I believe is approaching. 
I rolled the passenger window down and shined a bright flashlight off into the night. Nothing there. Turn to the driver's side and this guy has his face pushed against the glass. Grinning from ear to ear. I screamed, and he was gone. I slammed the truck in drive and took off. We have all the time running cameras on our trucks. I got to the first safe place to stop and called my wife. I didn't want to scare her, so I didn't mention the guy or the hailstorm. I did however pull the SD card and check the cameras. I promise you this guy never popped up on my front or rear cameras. I've always played it off as my imagination. I will say I don't drive through the Delta in the dark anymore if I don't absolutely have to. Around 2006-ish, I was driving flatbed, picked up a load of construction material. Drywall? Roofing? Don't remember but it was pre-packaged in boxes and I remember having to use strap protectors on the load, in rural Tennessee. Memory is foggy now, but I want to say it was between Memphis and Nashville, but closer to the intersection of the Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee state lines. Tarp required, so I strapped everything down, tarped the load and left the shipper. About five miles down the road, in the middle of nowhere woods on a two-lane road, I noticed my tarp flapping in the wind found a wide shoulder and pulled over to fix it. I realized that I just flat did a shitty job tarping this load and decide to redo it on the side of the road. Undo all the bungee straps, drag the tarps off, roll them back up, climb up on the load and start unrolling the tarps again and I see a guy walking down the same side of the road I'm on, coming towards my truck. I don't think anything about it other than to keep an eye on him cause I'm in the middle of nowhere and continue what I'm doing. About the time, I have tarp set in place and am climbing down to start hooking the bungee straps back on. This dude is getting close enough that I'm now paying more attention to him than I am to tarping my load. I grab my winch bar and set it on the trailer where I'm working just in case, 8 pound solid metal bar about 4 feet long tapered to a blunt point on one and then hollow on the other, used for tightening straps and chains etc. The guy gets to me, and the first thing I notice is his hair. It's like a mullet, but it's patchy as hell, like he tried to cut his own hair and said F it, good enough to party. The next thing I noticed were his eyes, which I can only describe as off. Like they were clear, I didn't think he was drunk or high or anything, but it also gave me the distinct impression that the elevator didn't go all the way up. Clothes were dirty and not well maintained, with dirty white tennis shoes, cause I remember he didn't have laces on one shoe and the tongue was noticeably out of place. He stops by me, waits until I acknowledge him and just says I've got a long walk. I'm like yeah man, you do, we're in the middle of nowhere. Making it clear there's no ride to be had here. He nods, starts walking by me continuing on his way, stops at about the driver door on my truck and turns around, comes back to me and repeats himself. I've got a long walk. At this point, I explain that I can't give him a ride, insurance and all that. Apologize for not being able to help him out and he seems to accept this, turns around and leaves. I wait for him to get a little ways away from my truck and start working on finishing the tarp job. I still keep an eye on him and he's moving away from me. As I'm putting on the last of the bungee straps, I look over to check where he's at, and he's turned around heading back towards me, now about 100 yards in front of my truck and coming back my way. It looks like he's talking on a cell phone, has his hand up to his face and I can barely make out his mouth moving his other hand waving like he's having a conversation with someone. I finish with the straps, grab my winch bar, and am climbing into my truck as he's about 10 yards away now. Soon as I'm in the cab, I lock the doors, and set the winch bar on the passenger seat just in case. I look at the guy and realize he's not talking on a phone, he's talking to his hand, and now I'm nervous, cause he doesn't look like he's having a nice pleasant chat, it looks more like an angry conversation. Crank the truck up put it in gear and just pull out, didn't look for traffic or anything. As I pass him, he's just looking at me, still holding his hand to his face with this dead look on his face just staring at me. Gave me the creeps. About the time I hit 5th or 6th gear, I look in the mirror and there's no one there. It was summer and my dad's birthday, so we drove to a casino 2 hours away to watch a boxing match with my uncle. It finishes and we drive back the same night. We're nearing a canyon with no phone reception, so we call my mom and tell her we'll be home soon. Canyon usually takes about 30 minutes with no traffic, it's around midnight. So we enter the canyon and we're all pretty tired. 
To keep us talking we start telling stories, most of them creepy stories. This goes on for a while and it feels like time is passing in a haze. We pass this butte in the canyon, and suddenly, I get deja vu. I'm convinced we already passed that before. All of us have driven this canyon a hundred times and know the layout. We keep talking, and we pass the same butte again. This time, I point it out and my dad and uncle notice the time, it's 1am and we're still not home. So we all start to get a bit freaked out. We stop talking and just watch the road slowly pass by. Now that we're paying attention though, time seems to catch up. We exit the canyon around 1.15 am and call my mom who was freaked out she hadn't heard from us. We still to this day have no idea where that extra 45 minutes or so went. My family, as well as a couple of uncles and my oldest cousin went on a trip from Mexico City to Acapulco when I was barely a year old. Back home in the middle of the night, the car broke down, and a police car quickly came to our help. There were three policemen in the car, and the chief offered to take my dad to the nearest gas station, where he could find a mechanic, and told the other two officers to stay with our car. My dad says they seem absolutely not pleased with the order, until the chief told them, no worry, there's a woman and two children. That seemed to calm the two officers. Driving to the gas station on the police car, my dad asked the chief what was all that about. The chief told him that there had been many accidents in that part of the road, that's why they were able to find our car so quickly. All of the accidents involved young men traveling without female or child company. Those who had survived, said that they crashed because they could see a very beautiful woman next to the road, but once they came close to her, she turned out to be just a rotting corpse staring at them, and they crashed because they were paralyzed by fear. As a crew guy of an off-road racing team in Baja, California, Mexico, I got to test drive some rigs and trucks, so technically truck driver. We were driving down south along Sea of Cortez with a buddy at night at this four-hour dirt road to Gonzaga, which is pretty much in the middle of nowhere in the desert, and we see the lights of a car behind coming down fast and now effectively tailing us and the bastard had bar mount headlights on top or what seemed like it, which are super bright. It's normal, or was that locals get wasted in the nearest spring breaker town and then go down this road super fast to test their rigs since there's no police there. So I try waving him off to get the guy to keep them lights low, since he's blinding us, but he isn't slowing down a bit nor turn his roof lights off, and it was a dangerous super dark road. Finally, near a curve near the shore, I found a spot to bail off the road without crashing, and we see lights passing by us super fast and going straight to the curve. We were like, that's it, he is going to crash down to the sea, but the lights didn't fall and kept going straight into the beach and the sea and then pitched up abruptly to the night sky and disappeared. We didn't say a word for a minute or so, and then my buddy goes, did you see it? And I say, the freaking flying truck. Didn't talk about any more as simply it didn't make sense to talk about it, or with anyone else when we arrived. I was working the overnight shift from Friday night into Saturday morning at a gas station. At about 6 am, a semi pulls into the fuel aisle. Driver gets out, and almost runs into the store clearly shaken. His face is completely white, and he is obviously upset. My first thought was the poor man had hit someone on the road. We get a lot of drunks walking across a four-lane highway in front of the store. So I ask what's wrong. He looks at me for a second and is like, I'm not crazy. Now I'm thinking, great, I'm here all alone and this guy is losing it. I say of course not, I just saw something huge on the side of the road. Like a deer or bear? We had a bear get in the dumpster last week. No bigger than a bear on its back legs. Maybe a big person? It picked up a dead buck on the side of the road and carried it over its shoulder into the woods. I could only stare at him, my brain cannot deal with this information this late in a shift. A local comes up to the counter to get his usual and the guy tells him the story the local says, that's the Bigfoot that lives near the county line. The truck driver and I are both looking at this guy like he has two heads. He has to be joking. This trucker pays for his fuel at record speed and leaves never to be seen again. The local still insists it's Bigfoot. I just don't go in the woods cause I don't know. Not technically a truck driver but I used to work as a field technician in the oil industry, so I spent a lot of time driving through remote areas of Canada at odd hours. One very strange and eerie experience sticks with me. 
I was in either northeast BC or northwest Alberta, can't remember the exact location, driving late at night, when I noticed a very large black shape on the road in front of me. Thinking it was a moose, I stepped on the brakes, coming to a stop only a few feet from it. Despite being so close, and having my headlights shining directly on it, I still couldn't tell what I was looking at. It was vaguely the shape of a four-legged animal, but very big, probably about six feet tall. Aside from that it was completely featureless. I couldn't make out any details whatsoever, no shine from its eyes, nothing. And then I noticed there were more of them in the ditch on both sides of the road. Five or six, or maybe more, all the same as the black shape on the road in front of me. None of them were moving. They didn't look like physical objects or living things. More like just large patches of absolute darkness. After I got over my shock, dread started to set in, and I drove around the thing on the road and sped off. I don't really believe this was a paranormal experience. I had been driving for 8 plus hours through the middle of the night, and I was exhausted. Most likely, it was a hallucination caused by lack of sleep and spending too long staring straight ahead into the dark. But it was still a very unsettling experience. Driving from Spokane, Washington to Omaha, Nevada, was cruising down Highway 212 in the middle of the night in southern Montana. About 2 a.m., I'm pulling through the only town, Lame Deer, Montana maybe? I've tried to find it on a map since but can't be certain, on that lonely stretch of highway. One stoplight town, and I get stopped at the only red light. Hadn't seen a vehicle on the road since I had hopped off I-90 about an hour prior, and there wasn't a single person outside in the town. Sitting at that red light a loud siren and an alarm starts sounding. Loud enough that I don't see how any person in the town or within a few miles could have slept through it. It reminded me of the siren from the movie Silent Hill. I gunned it through the red light and away from that town as fast as my little four-cylinder Malibu would go. It may not seem that crazy, but just imagine the most haunting sound you've ever heard, in a place you've never been, several hours separated from seeing a person last. I'm sure there's an innocent explanation for the siren, but it still sends chills down my spine just thinking of it. I had a college teammate from Miami tell a story that he swears on to this day. He and his girlfriend were making the drive to Naples late night, on a two-lane road through the Everglades, and had been in a line of cars behind an 18-wheeler for multiple miles. She fell asleep, and he was surfing for something to listen to on the radio. Only one station came in clearly enough to be tolerable, so he gave it a listen. The DJ came on and said something along the lines of the stars are extra bright in the Everglades tonight. If you're driving through there, pull off and take a look. He said he normally wouldn't even think of it, but for some reason felt compelled to that night. He woke up his girlfriend, she was annoyed and didn't want to, but he convinced her it would be worth it. They stopped and just took in the stars for 5 to 10 minutes. He said it was the most amazing sky he's ever seen. They get back on the road and drive another few minutes and come across a massive accident. The truck they were following had jackknifed and took out a handful of vehicles that were following. He said there are multiple fatalities, but I've never been able to find a new story about it to confirm, probably would have been in 2005-ish. They most likely would have been involved if not for that random DJ on the only radio station to come in that night. Trucker here. I think the best creepy thing that ever happened to me was I was heading from Tucson, Arizona up into Salt Lake City, Utah. Well this was a few years ago, and the main highway had been taken out in a flash flood, was under construction so I had to take a weird detour through the mountains in lower Utah. Well it was getting late, and I was getting tired, so I pulled off onto the shoulder and went to sleep in my bunk. Now this was in the middle of nowhere, closest town was like 40 miles away, so it is completely pitch black outside once I turn the lights off. Anyway around 4am, I wake up because I'm hearing something messing with my truck, like playing with the air and power cables between my cab and the trailer, which is literally 6 inches from where my head is at but on the outside of the cab. Then I feel something climb onto the landing that's on the back of my truck, and it shakes my whole truck, so I'm guessing something around 2 to 300 pounds was climbing around back there. I'm thinking like a mountain lion or a bear. At this point, I'm wide awake, and I want to get this thing away from me, so I slam my hand into my cab wall trying to scare whatever is out there, slam hard enough to really make it loud. I then hear someone, a male, scream bloody murder, and I hear them fall off the back of my truck. 
I then hear about 15 other people all around my truck yelling. I climb up front, turn on my lights and illuminate a squad of army reserves doing their midnight ruck march and capture drills. Turns out these guys were supposed to go find an abandoned truck and secure it for their midnight drills. That truck was three miles back down the road. They were not expecting me to be sleeping there, and thought I was part of the drill. I'm ex-military, so after explaining I was not part of their test and legit was just there out of coincidence, we laughed it off. They had to radio to their CO and tell him I was there and not have the other squads bother me. When I was younger, my family and I went on a road trip to Wyoming to see Yellowstone National Park. It's a beautiful place, and if you haven't seen it yet, I recommend it. Anyways, so from our home in California, it was about a 17-hour drive in our Yukon XL. It took us several days worth of on and off driving to get there, and during the nights, we would try to find a little motel to rest at. One of the nights, due to us being behind schedule, my dad attempted to drive through the night to get us there sooner. He made it probably into the wee hours of the night before he deemed it unsafe and parked us in this little unlit rest stop in the middle of the woods in some flyover state. My brothers and I had fallen asleep in the car several hours before he'd stopped, so for at least a couple hours, we were all sleeping in the car in this dark, little parking lot surrounded by forest. Having got a couple hours of sleep and being in a pretty uncomfortable position, I woke up in the middle of the night pretty disoriented but not really scared. I looked around and saw everyone fast asleep in this pitch black car, and naturally I felt pretty alone. I tried to fall back asleep, but it just wasn't working out, so I just sat there for a while, boredom setting in. Looking out the window to see where we were, it was pitch black, so I couldn't see jack shat. Luckily, I wasn't the type to pack light and had brought a couple flashlights in my bag. Being careful not to disturb my sleeping family, I reached into the backseat, unzipped my bag, and pulled out a little plastic, yellow flashlight. It wasn't the brightest, but it was enough to see the foreground of the general surroundings. I put it up to the glass, making sure not to make any noise, and pushed the little switch into the on position. I pressed my face against the glass and looked out. At first, it looked like a normal tree line with some bushes, trees, whatever. But as I scanned the darkness, looking for animals, buildings, etc., I noticed this dark shape standing between these two trees in the distance. It looked like the shape of a man, but it wasn't moving, just sitting there. After watching it for a good while and seeing no real signs of movement, I just assumed it was a bush or some kind of natural occurrence. Just as I was about to turn the light off and re-attempt sleep, I saw this shadow shape turn 90 degrees and move behind a tree, disappearing from sight. This scared the hell out of me and I immediately turned off the flashlight and threw my sweater turned blanket over my head, shut my eyes tightly, and covered my ears. I was paralyzed with fear and, too full of adrenaline to get any sleep, sat in this semi-fetal position, clutching my flashlight, for the rest of the night. I waited until the sun came up and we were back on the road before I got any sleep. I didn't tell anybody about the man I saw in the woods. We were leaving a wedding we had attended that was held about three hours from home. My boyfriend had stayed sober in order to drive us home, I was pretty drunk. As we were driving the dark country back roads to get back to the city, I was half dozing. I remember squinting because there seemed to be bright headlights washing over us, and then my boyfriend who was driving started screaming, like full on screaming like I've never heard him do before or since. It wasn't a loud, high pitched screaming but a deep in the throat screaming that broke in and out and that left him hoarse. He swerved our car sharply to the side of the road nearly into a ditch. I was now fully awake and said, what? Are you okay? He said that he saw a truck coming full bore towards us in the dark and honestly thought we were going to die. I looked behind us, a long straight road with no houses or streetlights. There was no sign of a truck or any kind of vehicle, no rear headlights on the road or any light from a truck's headlights, which we would have seen, and no sound of truck or car, or anything. But he was shaking, and I initially brushed it off as him maybe falling asleep at the wheel, which is already scary in and of itself. We were on a narrow country road, there was no way a massive truck could have gone by us without hitting our car, and I don't remember feeling the rumble and vibrating of our car, which was an old pos, that would have happened if a truck had narrowly missed us. So I dismissed it. He still swears that he saw a massive truck coming towards us. However, 
I do remember a flood of headlights hurting my half-closed eyes just before my boyfriend freaked out. Many years ago, a friend and I decided to visit our mutual friend at her university and spend the weekend with her. We had extremely detailed directions to follow, and we were told the trip should take about three hours. While nothing went wrong on our drive, it seemed to take forever. I don't remember exactly at what point the woods started, but I do remember traveling through these woods for a long time, perhaps an hour. We were already well past the three hour time frame my friend had given us by the time we left the woods. When we finally reached my friend's college town, it was nearly four and a half hours since we'd left. We didn't get lost. We never hit traffic or stopped for more than a few minutes. But we quickly forgot about it, since we were happy to spend the weekend with our friend. When the trip back was a little over three hours, we thought it was weird but didn't think much of it at the time. It wasn't until my next trip to visit that I realized something had been strange. I spent that whole next trip waiting for the long path through the woods that we had been on the first time, but it never appeared. Following the same directions as the first time, the entire trip took me about three hours, as did every other trip I made out there in the following years. I don't know what happened, and I've never been able to replicate it. I still wonder what happened and where we really were when passing through those woods. My grandfather was in the Air Force and one night he was driving, back to his base maybe, I can't quite remember, and he saw a woman standing on the side of the road in a long white dress at about 2 am. He circled back to ask if she needed help and she was nowhere to be seen. He searched for her for about an before giving up, and deciding to leave it alone. When he decided to go on his way, he had a strong feeling that he needed to switch lanes, he was on the road alone in the middle of the night, so he had no idea why, and just ahead on the road there was a broken down truck with no hazards on that he would have hit, and probably been killed by, if he stayed in the lane he had been in. To this day, he's convinced the woman was trying to warn him, like an omen or something. This isn't my story, but an old friend of mine's. In the 90s, John was an IT guy in parts of eastern Iowa and far west Illinois. He was used to driving from one account to another either late at night or early in the morning. He'd pick a halfway point to use a rest stop and he'd grab one of those awful paper cup coffees from the machines while he was there. One early morning about 4.30 a.m., he was in Iowa and he stopped at a wide spot in the road rest stop. He parked and there weren't any other people there except for a couple of semis who looked like they had been there for quite a while. He went into the men's room and it was deserted. He used the bathroom and went to the sink to wash his hands. He said he caught some movement from the corner of his eye and there was a very tall, very thin man standing right in the middle of the entrance about 15 feet away. He was dressed all in black and he says that the guy's eyes were pitch black. The man was giggling to himself and John swore he was at least 8 feet tall. He glanced down to grab a paper towel from the machine and when he looks up this man is so close he can hear him breathing with a loud bubbly sound. There's no way he could have crossed 15 feet in one second. As he told it, this man or thing slowly smiled at him, and it wasn't a smile. It was a bearing of serrated, sharp teeth and this thing starts chuckling like he's looking at a three-piece KFC meal. My friend screams Jesus help me, and runs for his car. My friend says the thing is startled, like he wasn't supposed to be able to move. He felt like he should have been frozen like staring at a snake. He runs to his car, which wasn't locked, slams the locks down, starts the car and floors it getting out of there. As he's leaving he looks in the rear view and this thing is running after the car. He always swore somehow this thing followed him home. He was paralyzed in an accident not long after and I went to care for him for a little while. I brought my four-year-old son with me and in his typical baby way, he would chatter away while the two of us were talking. I asked him one day who he was talking to. My son said, he says his name is Biter. He has long teeth and he lives with Mr. John. I grabbed my son and ran out of there. I never went back to that house. My grandfather told me the story about how he was driving west to east along an empty stretch of road in southern South Dakota. He stopped at a stop sign at an intersection with nothing in sight, no buildings and no other vehicles. Then there was a bright light that hit him. He looked up and saw a bunch of blinking lights. Next thing he knew, he was at the counter of a diner about an hour down the road. It was about six hours later and he had no idea what had happened. He asked the person at the diner when he came in, 
And the guy told him he came in about 10 minutes ago and just started drinking coffee without talking much. My grandpa told him what had happened and the guy said something like, yep, that happens around here sometimes. Nothing weird ever happened to him again. He avoided that area for the rest of his life. He said he doesn't believe in aliens and doesn't know what happened, but I had a suspicion he thought he had been abducted and just never accepted it. He told me never to tell this story to other people, but he died years ago and most of the people who knew him are dead, so I figured it was okay. Not a truck driver, but I've crossed the states many, many times in my career. I used to tour manage a band that consisted of four musicians and two crew, so it was a total of seven of us. We would often drive a white Sprinter van with a U-Haul trailer on the back, and if you're familiar with U-Haul, you know they have different pictures on the sides of them, often a state and something significant from that state painted on the side. We were about an hour outside of Roswell, New Mexico at 2 a.m. It was in the summer, we were coming from having just played the New Mexico State Fair. In every direction around us it was pitch black, no lights from cities or even rest stops, no other cars, nothing. We have absolutely no phone signal. All of our phones say no signal at the same time. It's a two-lane highway, the only illumination coming from our headlights. We haven't seen another car for a very long time. Suddenly on the horizon, we see a light appear directly ahead of us. We keep driving normally, and the light is approaching us quickly. We rightly just assume it's another car coming our way on the other side of the highway, but then as the vehicle goes to pass us. It's a white Sprinter van towing a U-Haul trailer with the exact same state artwork as ours on the side, same tires, same model van, same trailer, same everything. And as soon as we pass it, it's gone. All of us very uncomfortably said the same thing at the same time. Was that, did that van have the same, what are the chances? I'll never forget it. We couldn't do anything but just uncomfortably acknowledge we all saw the same thing and none of us were losing our minds. Two stories my dad has told me. While driving Pacheco Pass in California, he had an empty trailer and it was really windy, so it was swaying back and forth. He saw some girl walking through and he tried to merge lanes to avoid her and heard a loud bang. He thought he'd kill someone with the side of the trailer. When he could stop, he was looking for signs everywhere, and there was nothing anywhere, not even a dent in the trailer. Second one was also in Pacheco Pass, he saw some woman wandering on the side and stopped and let her in the truck said she was dripping wet. It wasn't raining, but there's this lake next to the freeway, so he thought she was swimming late night. She's silent. While he's driving after a little bit, he said he turned over to her and there's no one there his seat is dry. I told him to tell the story of the girl that got in his car when we were at dinner with one of his trucker buddies. And when he starts off the story, and his friend says wait, that happened to me and explains the same story. Apparently back in the day, truck drivers would kill and throw people in the lake or just on the side of the road. This isn't something we saw, but experienced. My dad was a trucker, and in the summers, I tagged along with him. One evening, we were driving from Houston to Jacksonville and somehow we got turned around on the back roads of Louisiana. The last major place I remembered us being in was Troy at about 1 AM. Well it was almost 3 and we had no idea where we were. We eventually came to this little bitty town. It had one broken stoplight, a diner, an abandoned factory, and some empty shopping centers. In total it was maybe four blocks from one end to the other. We were both hungry and because we didn't want to wait to go to a truck stop, we pulled in behind the diner. Now that I think about it the fact that a small town diner was open at 3 am should have been a sign that something was amiss. We get in and this diner is pretty nice actually. A bit old school, reminiscence of the 60s. There's a single waitress on duty and a cop eating in a booth. We naturally all got to chatting. I remember that meal so clearly because it was the first time I had grits. They were loaded with cheese and bacon. The cop gave us directions back to the highway and bought me a chocolate milk for the road. I even remember the tables. They were composite wood covered in polka dot contact paper. Well we eventually made it to civilization and later that morning at a stop my dad asks about the town. Cue a lot of confused local truckers. He was sure he was getting the name right but no one had heard of it. A few months later, he was driving me back home to Texas and he drove through Louisiana attempting to find the town. We never could. We're still not sure what happened, 
If we drove through a ghost town no one remembered or something weirder, but I remember that night clearly. Not a trucker, but my parents go camping in Wisconsin every weekend, we live in Minnesota, and when I was younger, we were driving home late one night. Back country road, no one else around, pitch black, trees almost connecting with each other above the road, very surreal. Anyways, my younger brother starts getting antsy, and pointed out a dark shape that he said was following us. I thought he was trying to scare me, but sure enough, something was there, running through the trees and keeping pace with the car. We told the parents who of course, didn't believe us. Suddenly, it shot forward, and seemed to disappear. But as we took a turn, and the headlights swept over the trees, we all saw a flash of red eyes in the bushes. My dad slowed the car to a crawl, and when the eyes blinked, and moved closer, he took off. My brother and I are still convinced that a hellhound or grim was following us home. The church I grew up in supported several missionaries to the Navajo Reservation in Nevada, Arizona. They ran two or three Baptist churches up there. We went up there often to help build houses, schools, etc. One trip when I was about 12 to 13 years old, I was dozing off in the front passenger seat of our 15-passenger church van. The trip leader, John, a practical, no-nonsense Vietnam vet, a carpenter, was driving. I sort of startled awake, every hair on my body standing on end, and I heard John praying under his breath, Jesus, Lord, protect us, Jesus, Lord, protect us. His face was lit only by the panel lights, but I could see him staring straight ahead his hands gripped tightly on the wheel. The speedometer said 85 miles per hour and I thought it was strange since our driver always stayed around 65. Then I looked out the window on my side and in the running lights of this van I swear I think I saw a gaunt, naked man running on all fours alongside our van on the highway. I almost pooped my pants. Skinwalkers, John said, just pray. You better believe I prayed. This thing stayed with us for about 5 minutes then just sort of pulled short and disappeared into the desert. Nevada, Arizona is a Navajo reservation, well known for urban legends of skinwalkers, corrupted medicine men or witches who can transform into animals, usually wolves or coyotes. I'm not a long haul trucker by trade, but back in the day, I had several odd jobs that required I drive across the country. One was shipping horses, I drove the truck from barns to shows or vice versa, and the other was working as road crew for a rock band. I was very very young, 16 to 20 years old. For reference, I'm female, short, athletic. Definitely the odd one are at a lot of rest stops and gas stations along the major routes. I also am or was tattooed and had a red mohawk which made me stand out more. Several weird things happened that I remember. But first I wanna say, Navajo Nation is indeed really really creepy. Always drove through at night too, never meant to plan that way, but that's always how it happened. Other creepy place is northern Utah. Totally hills have eyes up there. Anyways, here's story one. I was driving from Galveston, Texas to New Orleans, Los Angeles. Galveston had just been hit by the hurricane, and there was a weird serial killer moving through that city, so the vibe had already begun as weird. Just as I crossed the border from Texas to Los Angeles, I started to get super tired, was really late 3 a.m. ish. Tried to find a gas station to pull over, rest, and fill up, but all of them were closed. Gave up, pulled into the next one which was closed, parked in the far corner of the lot, killed my car, a convertible jeep at the time, and laid my seat back to sleep. Everything seemed quiet. There were a few lights from the station that were on 24-7, but I parked far enough away they couldn't really bother my eyes. I woke up with a start. Had been dreaming but I had this light gut instinct to wake up. I immediately saw someone covered in mud, wearing rags, holding a knife, advancing slowly towards my car. He was maybe 5 feet away, moving forward. My adrenaline kicked in immediately, and I switched the car on. At that point, he lets out some guttural growl and launches towards the car, as I'm backing up. I barely miss him as he's grabbing at the vehicle. With the headlights on, I could see he was covered in sores and the knife was all rusty. I sped out of there, didn't sleep again all the way to NOLA, freaked me out so badly. I also never again slept in my car. The idea he could have been watching me sleep for who knows how long freaked me out. My car was also a convertible, he could have easily cut his way in. 
That image of waking up to some crazy person advancing on me with a knife has also given me nightmares for many years. Second story, I was hauling horses from Kansas to Tucson, Arizona. Driving a big Ford truck, a dually, with a small trailer carrying three horses. Near gallop, around 2 a.m., the back inner tire on the passenger side blows out. I pulled off the road and assessed the situation. There was zero chance I could change the tire myself given the trailer or dually truck situation, and I'm tired and weak from exhaustion. So I call a tow company and try to find a temporary boarding place for the horses. It's the morning of Easter Sunday, literally no one is open. I'm going through the yellow pages calling tow company after tow company, yes, I'm old, this is pre-smartphones. Finally, I find a Native American tow company who also has a ranch with boarding for the horses and a truck to come grab the trailer, was a godsend. But the guy and his wife, who ran the company, told me to be very very careful not to leave my truck during the two hour drive it would take for them to arrive. They said this in such an emphatic way, I began to get really scared. They told me not to open the door for anyone and to keep the doors locked. No one was really on the road, so I was confused as to who could really be a threat out there. But I took them seriously and locked my doors and waited. I kept hearing this weird scratching sound on the back panel window of the truck, like someone was trying to open the small window back there. A couple times the truck would sway, which I figured was the horses. It was pitch black out, no wind. I heard a few footsteps, but chalked it up to the wind or my imagination, was getting scared out there alone unable to move. Eventually, the nice couple with the tow truck and other truck to haul the ponies show up. They immediately and first moved me from my cabin to the cabin of their tow truck. Tell me not to move or open the door under any circumstances. The couple is super fast, lady deals with the horses, man gets my truck up on the tow bed. They then drive me to their ranch, after the man drops my truck off at a local shop owned by his cousin who he says will handle the flat on Monday. Anyways long story short, this wonderful couple takes care of me and the horses, gets my truck tire fixed. As I'm ready to leave on Monday afternoon, there's a story on the local news of a woman with a flat tire who was murdered alongside the same stretch of highway on Sunday evening. She'd been out changing a tire and looks like someone murdered her. I asked the couple and they didn't say much other than to never ever get out of the car at night along this highway, ever. Said it was certain death. They also gave me some bags of potpourri stuff to have or burn in my truck cabin for protection. I felt very lucky to find these nice people to be honest. They definitely looked out for me and never once did I feel unsafe staying at their house. I was 18 at the time and definitely knew nothing about safety along trucking routes. But from now on I drive through that area and I don't stop if I can avoid it. Load up on gas, check tires and flag staff and ride on through to Albuquerque. There's weird stuff out there on the reservations and I don't pretend to know or want to know what it is. Not a driver myself, but I do has met certification for truck drivers here in the state of Nevada. We run one of the only offices that do them in the state, so I see tons of drivers every day. The amount of UFO type stories I hear from drivers is crazy, always when they are driving up through the grand wasteland that is Nevada between Vegas and Reno. Almost always they include colored lights moving faster than any plane they've seen and very erratically. Sometimes affecting electrical equipment in the vehicle, causing radio static etc. A lot of guys assume these are aliens from Area 51 or something of the like, but just as many think they could be government test craft out of Nellis or Area 51. There's also been a few stories of strange creatures crossing the road in the night. Most common depiction is hairless and four-legged. Very possibly some kind of genetic mutation from the atomic test site affecting a coyote or something. Either way unsettling stuff, God bless Nevada. About my third year into my career, I was taking a load of paper from Alabama to Ohio. Well the paper mill I loaded it was in the middle of BFE and was probably 65 miles away from the nearest interstate. I was a little low on my legal driving hours, so I figured I would spend the night at the shipper. Well the shipper doesn't allow overnight parking. Great so I get loaded and roll out. I set my GPS for the nearest truck stop which was 70 miles. There was one closer, but it didn't have showers according to Google reviews, so I'm rolling along this winding country road just taking my time because it's dark. I flip my high beams on when I get to a straight section of the road and I can see a figure walking. 
I remember thinking how brave they must be. Well as I get closer, I notice the figure is a man in an all white suit. As my lights uncovered more of him, I noticed he had a bag slung over his shoulder, not a big one, but big enough to notice. As I started to ease the truck over to left side of the road to pass him, he turned and stuck his thumb out as if to hitch a ride. Now I normally wouldn't have a problem with that except the fact that when he turned towards the truck, the place where his face was supposed to be was completely red and blank. No eyes, no nose, no mouth. Blank, red and blank. I must have hit my door lock button about 30 times. I made it to the truck stop and waited until daylight to take my shower. I don't know what I saw that night but whatever it was, it cannot ride with me. Not a long haul trucker, but once a newspaper deliver person in rural Georgia. I usually drove my route between 2 to 4 am down all sorts of dirt roads rally cross style flinging papers along the way. It was mostly fun, and I had some neat interactions with rabbits sometimes racing me on the road, and near missing owls. However, I was always at least partly creeped out for the entire ride with the completely unrealistic and supernatural fear that I was never really driving alone. Always afraid that at some point, something from the back seat would come out of the darkness and whisper in my ear. Anyways, getting to the most notable creepy part. I only ever saw people three times on my route. Once when I drove up on a wreck, another when someone ran me off the road, and a third, there was one road I always drove down the fastest because it was the creepiest. No lights, no houses, just long fences down a perfectly straight road that was hypnotically long. The only interruption in seeing that my headlights could shine light on along the way was an old style barn with hay loft and second story door for the loft. I never wanted to look at it, but ended up glancing at it every night as I drove by. Always the same, tall, creepy, old, leaning, door locked, moving shadows, gone. One night, as I was approaching, I noticed the door swinging out, open. Of course, I had to look this time. As I drove past, I glimpsed a pale person in a nightgown standing in the doorway. I actually slammed on brakes and reversed wondering if what I saw was real. The person or apparition was gone, and I never saw the door open again for as long as I drove the route. I actually haven't told anyone this because I think I imagined it, but I've been having nightmares about this, so I guess I need to get it off my chest. I was hauling lumber on 36E between Fortuna, California and Red Bluff, California, on my way to the 5S this was in 95 or 96, right before the coastal lumber industry folded. Route 36 is basically a glorified logging road. It twists through the mountain ranges and goes to one lane several times. Anyway, I got a late start, which was okay, as I like driving at night anyway. It was probably around 10 or 11 at night. As I crept up into the mountains, there was a nasty bit of fog. I rounded a corner, and suddenly there were all these deer just standing in the middle of the road, in the fog. It was kind of creepy, just seeing all these deer standing in the fog, in the middle of the road. I'm used to seeing them running across the road, not standing. I blew my horn, and they all turned and looked into my headlights, their ears twitching, the buck's antlers casting long twisted shadows into the fog. I blew my horn again, and they lazily walked to the side of the road. I idled forward between them. I looked out my driver window and saw the bucks and does warily looking back at me as I drove through them. But that wasn't the creepy part. I reached the peak and started back down, the fog on the eastern side abated. But as I rounded a corner, I saw a guy walking down the road, down the middle of the oncoming lane, his back to me. He had shoulder length black hair, wet and stringy from the moisture that had been in the air. He wore a faded blue wool lined jean jacket, hands in pockets, and darker jean pants. When my lights hit him, he swerved toward the shoulder of the other lane, giving me room. Then the most horrifying thing happened. I was going maybe 25 or 30 at this point, but as I came up to him, he suddenly bolted right in front of my truck. The last thing I saw was his wide black eyes and his mouth open in a silent yell, a black pit in his white face shining in my headlights before disappearing under the horizon of my hood. I stood on the brakes, the cab and the trailer behind hopping. I remember just thinking Jesus, Jesus, oh Jesus. I hoped out of the cab, I don't remember turning on the flashers, and ran back behind the truck. I saw him walking back up the hill, behind my truck, hands in his jacket pockets, his back illuminated by my red lights. 
He looked back at me, his black eyes and black mouth now grinning toothlessly. Then he dashed into the trees at the edge of the road. I was so scared, I didn't call out, I just got in my cab and drove on. I still dream about those wide eyes and that unholy mouth disappearing under my hood. I hope the dreams stop now. One night, my husband and I were driving to downtown to see a concert. I was on my phone and he was obviously paying attention to the road. We drove a black Chevy Impala and he saw this car that looked similar color to ours being pulled over. Sucks for them, he said. I looked up and saw that Impala being pulled over and didn't think twice about it. I decided to put my phone down and listen to some jams and see the city views. As I looked up, another Impala, also black, was being pulled over. Babe, that's insane that's the second Impala to be seen pulled over tonight. He being the rational man he is, it's just a coincidence. We were about 10 minutes from our venue and I was keeping my eyes peeled. I tried to see if there were any new announcements but surely there were not, and I was letting my Nancy Drew ways get into my head. We got to downtown two more black Impalas within feet of each other were pulled off the road by police officers. We found parking and decided to ask one of the officers that seemed to be supervising what was going on. Move along ma'am, nothing to see. I guess in my mind I started realizing that no, I wasn't entitled to this information and two something weird was happening. My husband grabs my hand and pulls me to the venue. Enough snooping, let's enjoy this concert. We use the Google app to track our parking so that it's be easy to find once we left. The concert was fun, but compared to other concerts we had gone to for this artist, it was super short. We arrived at 8, when doors opened, and left right before 10. Odd. I pulled out my phone to find our parking spot on Google. It had us tracked at 15 minutes away. That's impossible my husband says, it was like 5 minutes to get here, follow me. He was going the complete opposite way of what Google was telling us. Me not about to be lost in a city that I was unfamiliar said, can we please follow the directions just once, you're going the wrong way. We followed Google's instructions for about 30 minutes. None of it looked familiar and our car was nowhere to be found. I allowed my husband to find our way and we found our car within another 15 minutes. We got inside and turned it on only to hear a radio announcement talking about how an abducted girl was found in a black Chevy Impala just north of where we were. Needless to say that was an odd night. It was a dark and stormy night as they say, except that it wasn't. It was a lovely summer's night with a full moon casting a silver light over the landscape. The IT project that I had been working on was in danger of slipping, so all of us were pulling extra hours to get it finished. I was driving home at about 1 am along a country road, miles from anywhere, no lights from remote houses or anything, it was pitch black except for the moonlight. I knew the road well and although it was twisty initially, it came to a long straight stretch of road, maybe the route of an old Roman road. There were no turnoffs either left or right for miles. As I drove, I noticed some headlights in my mirror that seemed to be approaching fast. That's okay I thought, as soon as we get to the straight stretch, he'll pull out and overtake. After a bit, I checked in the mirror again and he was close. Very close. He's going to hit me, I thought. My knuckles were white on the steering wheel and my shoulders were hunched as I stared through the windscreen waiting for the inevitable when nothing. No squeal of brakes, no collision, nothing. And when I checked in the mirror, no lights either, the car had gone. I actually stopped my car to see if I could see an accident because this was I thought the only explanation. In the moonlight, I could see for miles, but no car, no debris, no accident. I have no idea what happened to this phantom car, but now as I write this 30 years after the event, the hairs on the back of my neck are tingling again. My girlfriend and I were driving back from a long road trip. It was about 2 AM. As we drove through a country lane, my headlights caught sight of an object on the side of the road. Thinking it might be a sheep, very common to see on the roads in rural Wales, I slowed down as they can be very unpredictable when startled. When we got closer, we could see it was a person sat on the verge. I slowed right down and stopped. My girlfriend and I both got out, and asked if the person was okay and if they needed help. A woman answered and stated she was lost, didn't know where she was. She seemed somewhat frightened, shivering, but not hostile. I asked where she was heading. She named the next town that we needed to pass through to get home, so I offered to give her a lift. We went over to her, 
and she was well dressed in branded hiking gear, albeit without a decent jacket, just a lightweight Gore-Tex pack light one, and seemed in good shape physically, except for the shivering, as well as clean and hygienic. She didn't seem to be homeless. However, she wasn't carrying a rucksack etc., so she didn't have any water, maps, emergency food, first aid etc. We helped her up, and she was able to walk, seemed lucid, my girlfriend asked her her name, the day and date, all of which she answered. I asked her who our PM was, and she answered correctly. I didn't suspect any mental impairment from alcohol or drugs, medication or lack of, concussion or any psychological issues. And this is where the strange part happens. As we got to my car, she said she needed to relieve herself before we set off. She went into the trees by the side of the car and after a few minutes, my girlfriend shouted her name and asked if she was okay. No reply. I grabbed the torch from my car, and went and searched, but after 10 minutes, couldn't find her, she had just disappeared. My girlfriend and I got in the car, looked at each other in disbelief. We rationalized that we hadn't both hallucinated. After all, we had physically helped her up to her feet, talked to her etc. I noted the GPS coordinates of our location, and we reported the incident at the police station of the town she was trying to find, giving her name and full physical description. We left our details, and asked to be contacted with any news. We heard nothing, but happened to be in that town about six weeks later, and called in the police station for any news. Nothing. No sightings, no reports of a missing person matching our description, no bodies found, nothing. We've talked about what happened many times, maybe she had mental health issues. Maybe she wandered off and got lost again and perished. Maybe she was found again and got back to the town. But hopefully, for the love of God, she is safe and well, and receiving any help she might require. This happened to a dear friend of mine in the 60s. He took his girlfriend home one evening after a date, and was on his way home. She lived on an old dirt road in the country. As he rounded a bend, he looked in his rear view mirror, and there was a young girl in the car with him. He said that he began to scream and drive wildly until he came to the main highway. He looked back again and the girl was gone. We checked it out and discovered that a young girl had been walking home on that road 10 years ago that very evening when a car rounded a curve wildly, running over her. This happened many many years ago on a dark stretch of Highway 78 in Georgia. I was driving home late after working on a project, and I was on my bike, full head helmet. It was cold as hell, but I didn't care. Then I hear something coming up on me. There's no way in hell it's a car, or a truck. When you ride, you kind of learn the sound of bike engines. Whatever the hell out was, I'd never heard it before. Then he was right next to me. It was an immaculate custom chopper with some really weird looking engine in it. He had three lights, the main one and two smaller ones. I turned to look, and the guy's wearing a full Darth Vader helmet. Not like Darth Vader on the side, but it looked like Darth Vader was driving. I must have been pushing 80, he just opened the throttle and shot away from me at least 30 miles faster. Damn I wish GoPro was available back then. In my profession, I encountered many strange things while driving, both day and night, but this the strangest by far of anything I have ever seen and it's from when I was a teenager. In the early 70s, my friends and I used to ride around out in the mountains and get high. I live in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains and we could drive to the top of several different mountain ranges in under an hour. My friend Mark had a 1970 Plymouth Barracuda. It was Plymouth Orange with a 383 V8, 4 speed, it was a super fast car. Since we lived here in the mountains, our girlfriends lived in some isolated areas where the roads were narrow and many were gravel. One weekend night, I don't remember if it was Friday or Saturday, I just know it was a weekend because the girls weren't allowed to go out on weeknights. Anyway, after I took my girlfriend home I passed Mark on the road taking his girlfriend home and we stopped and talked. He asked me if I wanted to ride with him to take his girlfriend home, then ride up to the top of the mountain to check out the stars. It was a beautiful warm summer night and the moon was close to full. One of our other friends, Larry was already with him. I wasn't ready to go home, so we went back to a small general store that we all stopped at every day. The store owner lived next to his store, and he didn't care if we parked there when the store wasn't open, so I parked my car and went with them. 
After we took Mark's girlfriend home, we started out for the top of the mountain. We got to the top of the mountain around midnight and parked at a wide turnaround spot. We only passed a couple of cars on the way. In the 70s in our part of the country most people were farmers or ranchers and they are in the bed by 9 p.m. We were the only one around for miles, and we sat out on the ground and looked at the sky. I don't know if you have ever been on a mountain top on a clear night with no lights from cities or towns around. We were at least 50 miles from the closest small town, and it was not big enough to make any bright light. So we rolled a joint and Larry and I smoked it. Mark didn't smoke weed, or cigarettes, he didn't like to drink either, so he wound up being the driver most of the time. After a couple of hours and several deep discussions about the universe, we packed up and started down the mountain. Mark was driving, I was in the front passenger seat, and Larry was sitting in the middle of the back seat, so he could still be in the conversation with both of us. We were going around 25 miles per hour or so, and about a quarter way down the mountain when something passed us overhead. All we could see was that it was light colored and it was huge, it blocked out the light from the moon and stars. It was moving towards the top of the mountain and it was flying very low not far above the treetops. We all sprung to life from the shock of it and asked each other, did you see that? Mark hadn't smoked anything so we knew that the weed wasn't messing with us, it wasn't that good anyway. Mark turned around in the middle of the road, actually, he wound up the engine and popped the clutch and did a 180 with the tires smoking and we took off after it. The road was winding but it was paved, so we could catch glimpses of it when we got to short straight sections of the road. It wasn't moving very fast and we chased it back to the top of the mountain where we had been parked a short time before. When we stopped and got out, we could see it a lot better. It was huge and round with a strange color of blue lights around the entire circumference, it had a circle of white lights in the center. It was going away from us to the west and up, we watched it until it was out of our sight. We were excited and talking about the fact that we had just seen a UFO, talking about how it could be an experimental military craft or maybe a real spacecraft from another planet. While we were talking, we suddenly heard an extremely loud sound coming up the valley, and then two fighter jets broke out from the valley, not more than 100 yards from where we were standing. Then we realized that the UFO had not made any noise at all. The jets went in the same direction as the UFO to the west and up, we stood there shocked and in disbelief of what had just happened. We went back down the mountain and got my car talking about what we had just witnessed the whole way. We all went home but none of us slept any. And when we met the next day, we didn't know whether to tell people about what we saw, we figured they would say we were crazy or high or making it up. But it turned out that many other people in our area had seen it and reported it. There was a story on the news and people who had seen it were interviewed. We only told our friends about our close encounter, because the people who were interviewed by the news were being made fun of by everyone. But it was seen by over 300 people, so we knew we weren't crazy, we just didn't want to be laughed at. The news said the military wouldn't comment on it, but they didn't deny it either. Larry passed away a few years ago and I moved away, so Mark and I don't see each other anymore, but I'm sure he remembers the night we saw a UFO. Many years ago, my husband and I were driving near Reno, Nevada very late at night. The moon was so big and bright, the air warm and fragrant with thousands of acres of sage. The road was empty but for us, and you could barely see the mysterious shadows of rocks and the occasional shrub or tree on the sides of the road. Suddenly, there was a rabbit on the side of the road. Then there were more rabbits. Then more, and at one point, there were hundreds, maybe thousands. We slowed down to witness this, this odd rabbit conference in the middle of the desert in the moonlight. Never seen anything like it before or since, this rabbit gathering. I've always wondered about it and all of the beauty and mystery that happens when we aren't looking. This is going to sound crazy, and I understand, but I know what I saw. I used to work night shift at a small factory. We made knife handles, pistol grips, gun stocks, and some other odds and ends out of wood products. The hours of my shift were 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. and I usually took a dinner or lunch break around 1.30 a.m. I live in northern Maine and it was late March, so there was still some snow but not a lot, it was kind of patchy in the woods. So, I took my dinner break and as a smoker, got in my truck and left the parking lot to go have a smoke. I got to a very desolate part of the road, which eventually turns to a dead end, and I saw a large, tall, upright, 
long-haired dark gray and brown figure or animal cross the road about 50 yards in front of me. Was that? No freaking way. I stopped and got out to look for tracks or footprints to surely identify what I had seen but there was nothing. The hair on my neck and arms stood up and I had this eerie feeling like someone or something was watching me, so I rushed back into my vehicle. I have been an outdoorsman my whole life and have seen every animal in the area, and I still don't know what this was. It looked like a very large and hairy human, like Bigfoot or Sasquatch there, I said it. I'm not a huge believer in this sort of stuff, but I still have no idea what I saw that night, sober as a judge. It was an early September night in September 1990, most likely a Tuesday night. It was approaching midnight, and believe it or not, at that time the regional post office in Maryfield, Virginia was open until midnight. Now in 2020, it's only open until 8 p.m. In any case, I dashed out the door to make the 10-minute drive from Annandale through a piece of Fairfax, to get to the Maryfield post office to mail a bill or two that were threatening to be paid late. Driving down the familiar winding two-lane suburban road, Prosperity Avenue, I noted that the houses were set fairly far back from the road with the average lot size something like three-four of an acre. The area was fairly heavily forested with large trees, some original growth that were probably close to 80 feet high. There were scant street lights positioned fairly far apart, and the darkness seemed to swallow up the light they tried to give out. I sped to the post office making it in and out with maybe three minutes to spare. On the return trip, I went around curves and up and down hills until I was about halfway home. And as I passed the small parking lot to Aikens Park on my left, my eyes were trying to resolve what was up ahead. The sky was a dark gray, the canopy of trees was even darker, almost black. The macadam road was lighter than the sky, owing to the mix of so much reflective glass in the mix. And ahead, I saw what I thought was a black sodden log that had fallen across the road. I felt that this was odd, as there was no rain, not a breath of wind and I had just been here, like seven minutes ago. Soon it appeared to be rolling or moving. What? As I approached, it resolved in my headlights into a ten-foot lizard. I stopped as it blocked my path. The head was moving and it was doing that weird two steps forward, two steps back rocking motion that lizards sometimes do. It had been very flat against the road, but now it was rising up on all four legs, becoming much taller. The weirdest part is that it had those conical, independently rotating eyes like a chameleon. The closest match to it would be a female Jackson's chameleon. But unlike that 14-inch chameleon, this thing was 10 feet long including the tail, the tail was stretched out straight like an iguana. After three to four minutes, drinking it all in, I went around it in the other lane, thinking that I had been treated to an elusive piece of nature. As I drove away, it hit me, no way was that normal. I turned around to drive back and see it again. This time, I didn't really see it going back, as I was in the opposite lane. I had to drive faster this time because there was a car approaching me from behind. I turned around in the lonely, really dark parking lot for Aikens Park, and I suddenly got spooked. It was past midnight and I suddenly wondered what the heck was I was doing? I realized I didn't want to see that thing again. I turned left and onto Prosperity and approached the scene of the original sighting. I was moving faster this time, trying to get home. But there it was, in the same spot, except now it had rotated 90 degrees and was lined up parallel to the road, with the head facing me. This road was dangerous, it had narrow lanes, no shoulder and a few feet of standing dark water just an inch off the road. There were headlights coming up fast behind me, headlights closing in from the front. I had no choice but to roll over the lizard. It's not as bad as it sounds. I was driving a huge old Ford Fairlane, and I did a quick calculation of its clearance height and its wide wheelbase. If the lizard stayed down on the road, I would cleanly cruise right over it. So I sped up and rolled right over it, feeling nothing, and raced home. When I was safely home, I called the police and told them a large lizard was blocking the road. I sensed some skepticism from the dispatcher, and I never heard anything back. But I'll never forget my encounter and wish that I'd had a modern smartphone with me to record the sighting. In September 1999, my wife and I were driving back to London on the M40. Just after passing the turnoff for Stratford-upon-Avon, the weather got worse and there was a patchy low-lying fog, which swirled around with the wind and the traffic. Suddenly, a patch of fog formed into a shape like a human arm with a hand. 
The hand reached towards the right hand front tire as if to grab it. I was scared, but tried not to react to avoid scaring my wife. However, Kathy gasped and screamed. I asked Kathy what she screamed at, and yes, she saw a foggy arm and hand the same as I did. I used to work a late shift, and came home at about 2 a.m. each morning. One night while driving home, I was about two minutes from home, when I looked to the left side of the street and I saw a pickup truck with its hazard lights on, and what appeared to be a body laying in the road. As I turned around to help, the truck took off and left the body. Needless to say, I was confused, and quite worried. I stopped in front of the body, and got out, asking if the person was okay. The body didn't respond. When I got closer to it, I could see that it wasn't real, but was a scarecrow of sorts, with a stuffed shirt and pants. Someone made it look like a body. I kicked it to the curb, to at least get it out of the road. The pickup truck came back, and watched from a distance as I got back into my car. I don't know if they left it there, or if someone else left it and they discovered it. Either way, it was definitely a strange occurrence. I was driving to work, and was halfway between two small towns in a remote, rural area. It was about 4 in the morning, quite dark, and furiously snowing. Full-on whiteout conditions, and about 20 degrees out. At least a mile to the nearest farmhouse. Suddenly, there appeared a man walking toward me in the middle of the road, leading an unsaddled horse by a rope looped around the horse's neck. I didn't know him. The man was wearing nothing except a pair of cowboy boots, and a cowboy hat. I stopped, offered him a ride, and to go slow enough he could hold the horse's lead rope out the window in his hand. He cussed me prolifically, adamantly refused, and continued walking, muttering and saying he had to get the horse in the barn before he got cold. Try as I might, I could neither get him to stop, listen to me, or get in the truck. He wouldn't even take the coat I tried to give him. I finally gave up and let him be. I asked around about him and never heard a thing about him, or ever saw him again. I was sitting at a crossroads in my car one night, waiting for the lights to turn green. I saw two large orange lights in the corner of my eye in front of me, but just off to the right, above a shop. I thought nothing of it, just street lights, until it eventually dawned on me that something wasn't quite right. These lights were not side by side as street lights would be, these were one above the other, and appeared to be directly above the shop, not in front of it and by the road. I looked directly at them for a second, but then the traffic lights changed. I turned left, and then parked up in a bus stop a few yards down, and took my phone out of its holder to take a picture, just to prove I wasn't imagining things. As I was about to take the picture, they suddenly swooped down towards me at high speed. I've no idea what they were and wasn't hanging around to find out. I dropped my phone, stamped on the accelerator and got the hell out of there before they crashed into me. They were too fast to be sky lanterns, and drones weren't heard of back then, as far as I know. Twice in the last few years, I've also seen a small orange light shoot across the sky that was far too fast to be any kind of jet plane, although it was coming from the direction of the local RAF base, something they were testing perhaps. My wife was with me the first time, my youngest son was with me the second time, and both saw the same thing I did, as on both occasions we gave each other that look that says, that wasn't just me right? This happened about 20 plus years ago or so when I was driving home from visiting my cousins in northern Nevada near Reno. I was on a 395 heading south late at night or early morning and there are certain parts of that highway that are literally pitch black and in the middle of nowhere. It's actually rather scary, and you better pray you never break down in those areas. So then, all of a sudden, I heard a noise I can't even begin to describe with words, but it was nothing like anything I've ever heard before. It was something mechanical for sure, not an animal or bird of any kind that lives on this planet anyway. Then the entire sky, and I mean the entire black sky, turned a weird kind of glowing pea soup green color and it was as if it was daytime. You could literally see everything everywhere for over a mile in every direction. It was essentially noon as for how well it was lit up. I was so scared, I pulled over to the side of the road and just sat there for over two minutes just looking all around having no clue what was going on. Mind you, there were no other cars on the road anywhere. Then, as quickly as when it lit up, it was pitch black again. Needless to say, I got rolling again and quickly got back up to cruising speed not having the faintest idea of what I just saw. 
I turned on the radio and tried to tune to any type of news station, but being that far out away from everything there wasn't very many stations that would tune in, maybe two. Nothing on the radio for the rest of the time on the road about what I saw either. It was sometime between 1977 and 1979 while I was traveling along a two-lane road in Nevada to Arkansas. It was early morning and I was on my way from the office in Jonesboro, Arkansas to a school district some 40 to 50 miles away. For four out of five days of the week, I traveled to a distant school district for my job. On Fridays, I stayed in the office and wrote assessment reports. Most of the roads on which I traveled were the same, with acres upon acres of farmland on either side of this very flat terrain. You could literally see for miles in all directions. Sometimes, you would see farm equipment or a crop duster, small prop plane, in the air. Generally, I saw the fields and nothing else, no other cars even. I was driving my two-door Toyota Corolla that morning, it was a three-speed, manual shift vehicle that was severely underpowered, 1200cc engine. Sometimes, I would drive my employer's new Saab, with a 5-speed transmission, it had serious torque and could handily go 90 miles per hour on those flat country roads. Not that day, I was driving the sluggish Corolla that had trouble getting up to 60 miles per hour. I saw a crop duster in the distance that day. It was getting closer and way too low to the ground, I was thinking it had a mechanical problem. Nope, the pilot probably recognized the car and was bored. I looked out of my side window to see this plane coming straight for the driver's side of my car, maybe six feet off the ground. I put the pedal to the metal, but of course, the Toyota wasn't going much faster. The pilot adjusted when I increased my speed, so I knew he wasn't having mechanical problems. At what seemed like the very last second, the plane took a sharp ascent and flew over the top of my vehicle. I swear to this day that I saw a smile on his face as he was flying towards my car.